at St. George Hospital, London, England. The impression that Haeckel's drawing gives the embryos look exactly alike is wrong. So, Michael Richardson and his colleagues did their own comparative study, re-examining and photographing embryos roughly matched by species and age with those that Haeckel drew. Lo and behold, the embryos often looked surprisingly different. This is what Ernst Haeckel gave y'all in the slide I gave you. This is the real. Now look at the bottom. Is that, do they look alike now? No. Do they look alike now? No. So when a scientist from where? St. George's Hospital, London, England. Embryologist. Not an Israelite. So you can't say, well, that's just some religious guy saying something. No. This is an embryologist from St. George Hospital in London, England that did a study and wrote a book about it. He showed that the embryos actually look all different. This was a lie. Everybody see that? Next slide. Now here we go. Real versus the fake, fake picture. I want everybody to understand that word ontology. The word ontology is the correct word that we use to describe the development of a fetus in a mother's womb. The comedic community, well I shouldn't say the comedic community because that would not be fair. Right. I should say those that purport to be the comedic community that are on the front lines, right, that call themselves scholars. Huh. They tell us that this right here is evolution. I'm telling you brothers and sisters that maybe now, not today, whatever, watch this video again when you're at home, the correct word is called ontogeny. Mm. And the word ontogeny is not evolution. That's a fact. That's right. They're taking for granted that y'all don't know that. But guess what? Somebody actually reads books. That's right. And that's not evolution, man. And this is the correct. This is real. Huh. This is fake. And this is real. This right here, brothers and sisters, is garbage. And it's a forgery. Next slide. That's right. And this is what modern scientists say. I'm going to speed up a little bit because I want my shot to come up here. I wasn't even supposed to be up here. Right, man. Now, brother, I want you to come, come up on. here, man. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. All right? What modern scientists say? Scott F. Gill, in the book Ernst Haeckel and Biogenetics Law, 8th volume, 8th edition, states that eventually biogenetics law has become untenable. I mean, it's garbage. All right? David G. Payne, Michael uh, J. Wenger, in the book Cognitive uh, Psychology, page 352, state that faulty logic, faulty logic, faulty logic, and problematic proposals, and problematic proposals relating to the development of an individual to the development of species turn up even today. The hypothesis, the hypothesis that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. In other words, a baby developing in its mother's womb developing is proof of evolution has been applied and extended in a number of areas, including cognition and mental activities, but it is faulty logic and problematic. Does everybody see that? Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. All right, one more. This statement is the key. Pay close attention, right? Play the video. Listen good. Same video we saw. I know because someone comes to me with science. Um, there's some other things that are going to have to come along with that science, such as authorship, ownership of, of conceptual frameworks, and things of that nature, because they're not as unimportant as many people would like to make them appear to be. So, Shaka again says authorship and ownership. We prove that authorship and ownership of ontogeny through recapitulation, in other words, a baby in his mother's womb proving evolution, we prove that that comes from the so-called white man and it was a forgery. Is everybody with me? Everybody's with me. Maybe somebody in here didn't see that. Did somebody in here not see that? Did I make that up? Okay, so let's prove one more proof of the so-called conscious community lying and I'm gonna sit my ass down so I'm gonna lie sharp. Come on, next slide. Now, here we go again. Exposing conscious monkey business, part two. We're going to play our brother Ankh. Before we do, I want everybody to understand something, right? So Ankh was wrong about evolution in the mother's womb. We found out that that was garbage, right? Another example that we are given by our illustrious conscious community is that there were moths that were in England. And the moth study that was done in England was actually proof that evolution or so-called natural selection takes place. Now, what you have to pay attention to in this video, right, is this, right? 
Ankh is going to be very brief, and he's also going to be very vague, meaning he's not going to give you a whole bunch of information. The reason why he's not giving you all the information is because he is lying. I want everybody to pay attention. We're going to watch the video, we're going to hear what he says, and we're going to see what's missing out of what he tells you. Play the video, brother. I'm a lie. Let's start again. Brother said, turn it up. So we're going to turn it up, right? We're going to turn it up. Now, listen, I'm, 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 I'm close. Listen, up. Listen, up. Listen, up. listen, I'm close to the thing, so I can't really talk on the mic, right? Our brother Ankh is going to tell us that we can tell that natural selection and evolution is real by the number of morphs. Morphs? <laughs> now, when I want y'all to pay attention to, right, it's not so much what he's saying, but I want you to pick, compare what he says to what I show y'all and see if he gave you all the information. Come. Yo, these, these guys really think we don't read. How do we know what the hell is going with these guys? Okay. Come on, a dingy looking butterfly? Shh, shh, shh. I was here. I'll give the example of moss. So you have three moss on the ground tree. Pause the video one second. So lock it, brothers. What happened? Where you want me to go? You want me to go over there? Yeah. What's up? What's up? Can't play from this. So I'll play from that. That's what you want. Yeah, that's all we're doing. All right. That's so all we're doing. Stay from here, right? Yeah. Stay from here. Right? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go, guys. Everybody, try to be quiet and pay attention. You're gonna miss it. Huh? Yeah. But I must hear. I'll give the example of. Listen, listen, listen. 
listen guys, listen, I, I don't wanna, I know, I know, we can laugh at this all night, me too. When I was, listen, when I was making this video, I was laughing too, but I have a short time, I want to brother I shot, come on, seriously. So listen to me, listen to me guys, because I got about two or three more slides and I'm done, because this is garbage. These guys don't want no problem. You guys, you guys in the community community don't want, listen, they ain't on the video, you guys don't want no problem. You don't want no damn problem, man. Now, let's, 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 let's examine what he said. He said that the brown moths, through natural selection, right, the genes in the brown moth selected brown because the white moths are getting eaten. So in order to survive, that's why the genes in the brown moth selected brown and didn't select white. This is what he said. This is the moth study, right? Now I have a question for anybody in the room that wants to answer. He said it was a study. Where did the study take place? That's right. It's imagination. That's right. No, it's not his imagination. That's right. It's not his imagination. He's being vague for a reason. Because simple, the simple of our people, they'll believe him because he said. Because he said. But the ones of us that are enlightened and have knowledge, we all want to know where you get that from. Where'd you get that? I'm going to show you where you got that. I'm going to show you. He's a goddamn lie. That's right. Next slide. The truth about the pepper moth study. Did the brown moths genes just select brown through natural selection, aka evolution, because the white moths are getting eaten up? Is that what happened? No. The peppermint moth is the most frequently talked about proof of evolution, even by those in the conscious community, as we see. Before, listen good, because if you don't listen, you're going to miss this. Before 1845, near Birmingham, England, I already gave you more information than he gave me. Near Birmingham, England, the peppered moth was primarily light colored. Originally, it was primarily light colored. But some had dark wings. These darker varieties were called melanic or carbonaria forms. In the uh, Mendelian genetics, some peppered moth offsprings were always born with light colored wings while others were born with dark wings. So these wings would, even though the, the moths were light, right, they would give birth some to have dark wings, some to have light wings, because genetically the moth was able to bring forth both. Some that had dark wings, some that had light wings, right? Now, the little moths would alight on the light colored trunks, and birds were able to see the darker ones more easily. Do y'all see that? The lighter moths would land on trees that were lighter, what year was this? 1845. The lighter moth, the little moths would alight on light colored trees and trunks, and birds were able to see the dark ones. Why were they able to see the dark ones? Because the dark ones stood out on the light trees. Does everybody see that, right? Okay. So the birds to see the darker ones more easily, and they ate them and tended to ignore the lighter ones. Why? Because the lighter ones blended in with the trees. In the 1850s, 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 about 98% of the uneaten pe peppered moths were of the light variety. Why? Because they blended in with the trees so the predators couldn't see them. Of course. Okay. Because of recessive and dominant genes in the moths, they, regular, they regularly produce both varieties, meaning dark, dark wing moths, and they produce light wing moths. But the darker wing moths were always eaten why? Because the predators could see them on the light trees. Does everybody see that? Y'all need a second to soak this in? Y'all see that? The predators would eat, were able to see the darker moths, and they ate them. So 90% of the uneaten moths were what? Light. This is 1850. Next slide. By the 1880s, in Manchester, England, same area, i.e. during the Industrial Revolution, toxic gases and soot were killing the light-colored lichen that was on the trees and caused and darkened the trees even more on the tree trunks. So the trees were originally light. Now the trees became what? The trees became what? Dark. The trees became what? Dark. The trees became dark. That's right. The changeover from light to dark began there also. The smoke and the smog from the factories darkened the trunks of the trees where the moths rested. Wow. This darkening of the trees made the dark-hued moths difficult 
to see, and lighter ones quite easy for birds to spot. Do y'all see where I'm going with this? The screen previous, the light skin moss, they were the ones, the light, ah, you're right, light skin. The light moss, the moss of the lighter wings, they were able to survive because the trees were light. But now, in the 1880s, during the Industrial Revolution, the trees started to get dark. So what do you think happened? By the 1950s, which is 100 years later, the screen before us in the 1850s, Come. now we're in the 1950s, the peppered moss of the dark variety, all the while, the moss continued to produce both light and dark varieties. Next slide. This is an example of camouflage and not evolution. That's right. I don't think so, y'all none of this. He just said jibber, 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 light skin, night moss, lemon moss, and evolution, evolution moss. I didn't give you no information. Now, where are you? Where are you? Now, nothing. This is an example of camouflage and not evolution. And natural selection say evolutionists. But in fact, but it is in fact, but the prey, the birds, selecting which prey they can spot. That's all it is. It's not evolution. It's the prey selecting which prey they can spot most vis visibly, which was controlled by the color of the tree, was by a product of the Industrial Revolution and not natural selection as proposed by those that want to push an evolution agenda. What you will find with the study is the closer you get to the industrial centers, meaning the closer you get to industrial England, like in Manchester, England, that will affect the number of black winged right. or white winged moths that you'll find. In other words, the closer you get to Manchester, England, is the more dark skinned moths you'll find. Why? Because the closer you get to Manchester, England, you get closer to the Industrial Revolution, which caused the trees to darken. So the black moths or the black winged moths were able to use their camouflage to hide from prey. But the further away, that you get from the Industrial Revolution is the more light wing moss you'll find and the less dark wing moss you'll find because there wasn't the trees changing color. Who don't see that? You can look this up online. I can make this up. Next slide. So, <laughs> hey. so we're going to give our brother arm um, the chef face for that scholarship, man. Let's go. Y'all gotta forgive me. I put this together in five minutes, so you know I apologize if it wasn't the least of some of you. Listen, the vocabulary of evolution, right? If we're going to discuss evolution, we're going to discuss ontogeny. If you want me to talk, like Sanetta called me up the last two days, they're having an evolution conference on August 2nd, and he asked me to participate. And he said to me, Well, what that does read from the Bible? I said, I'm not just reading from the Bible, I'm gonna come with science too. Man. Stop playing with me. Come on, science too. Right? Now, if I come to that conference, which I ain't saying I am or I'm not, I'm talking about ontogeny. That's right. You're gonna to prove to me that ontogeny is not real in evolution in the woman's woman's will. Good luck with that. Right? We're gonna discuss the recapitulation theory. Uh-oh. You're gonna to have to bring forth proof that outside of the so-called white man, that these are African concepts like you see. Good luck with that, right? Now, we're gonna discuss phylogeny. We're going to discuss natural selection. Listen, I didn't give y'all all the bullets I have tonight. I didn't, listen, I purposely left a lot of stuff out this presentation. We're going to discuss natural selection, and most important, we're going to discuss comparative anatomy. Now, before I sit down, anybody in the room knows what comparative anatomy is? Come on, y'all. Come on. Listen, listen, let me find out that all of y'all cut science class with me in school. <laughs> let me find out everybody cut science class and not just me. Listen, 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 listen. I respect each and every one of you in this room. Everybody in this room knows what comparative anatomy is. What do you want to say, Kim? There is no really anatomy to prove evolution because the very fact that to this day they're still looking for what they call the what? The missing link. Transitional form. That, that yeah, Come. Come. But what is comparative anatomy? Everybody in this room knows what it is. I'm gonna tell you. When I tell you, you're gonna be like, I do that. When a man and a woman The cranial structure of man and monkey Woo! is similar. That's right. The bone structure of man 
and monkey That's right. is similar. Right. Y'all see that? Don't deny. Right. Y'all see that, right? So those of our people that have the white man's mind, right, right but talk that black stuff, right. that so-called conscious stuff, right. they use comparative anatomy right. as well as ontogeny recapitulates um, phylogeny. They use these these uh, terms to try to push off this thing as though it's African. Right. What I'm here to tell you is comparative anatomy does not prove evolution. That's right. Now, now, That's right. what y'all may or may not know is that the difference between man and ape, an ape or primate, anatomically, some people say is less than 1%. That's what they say, right? Now, I want everybody in this room to understand something, and I know I want y'all to use this and go study this. I want y'all to understand or study the word mutations. Everybody study that, mutations, right? Mutations are harmful 99% of the time. So even though, as they say in science, there is 1% between primate and man, I'm here to tell you that point mutations, y'all didn't know Israelites knew about point mutations, right? Good, good. Point mutations between ape and man, although they say it's 1%, you will have to have more than one million point mutations in your DNA for you to switch from primate to man. Exactly. Y'all gonna find out that mutations are harmful. So it'll be hard enough to have one or 100 or 1,000 or 100,000 mutations, much less goddamn one million to return to age. These guys are out of their mind. Everybody, I'm gonna allow my brother Matt to tie it up. Man, bro. That's why I said earlier on, right? That we had a sure word. That's why the most I said in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, at verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness for the most high. For it is written, he took it the wise in their own crackers. And Colossians 2, verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. speaker tonight, I'm going to say this one more time, right? In case anybody, after y'all leave here, in case anybody says, well, that was just his opinion, at the beginning of the video, our brother who deals with comedic science, who right. deals with Egyptology, whatever you want to call it, our brother Shaka Amos says science means what? No. No. Science means what? No. Science means what? No. Do they know for sure any of the stuff that we just said? It's all theoretical pro uh, probabilities and possibilities and all types of it's garbage, brothers no, and sisters. Right. It is absolute garbage and they can't prove it. Right. And they can take their daggone creation and evolution conference and shove it up there with that. Yeah, with that, I want everybody, brothers and sisters, I want y'all to put your hands together for the general. Ayo! 